Hi, I'm Ben Max from Gotham Gazette. And I'm Jarrett Murphy from City Limits. And today, as part of our ongoing look at the big issues shaping the 2021 race, we're focusing on the economy. It's an essential issue, obviously, related to how people can uh, work or get to work or what kind of work they have, what options, unemployment has obviously skyrocketed during the pandemic, making this issue of utmost importance uh, here as the 2021 elections unfold. And, you know, it's obviously important to like family survival, that the economy is working uh, correctly, it, you know, shapes inequality in terms of where the benefits from the economy are flowing. It also has huge social impact, you know, having a job um, is, is a key part to staying out of poverty and, you know, for younger people staying connected. Uh, and it feeds into city policy in a very direct way, covering all other issue areas because, the economy is essential to generating taxes through property taxes on the value of our real estate. Um, you know, sales taxes play a role, business taxes, of course. And then New York City depends uh, to a great degree on the income tax, um, as of course does the state and federal government. So economic activity and jobs feed into basically every other policy issue we could be talking about. Right, absolutely. And of course, there's direct relation, uh, you know, in, in both going in both directions between sort of public safety, crime and the economy. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take a long memory to know that, you know, Mayor Michael Bloomberg was, of course, very focused on the, the health of the city's economy from a certain perspective, of course. And, you know, Mayor Bill de Blasio has also known that, um, you know, it's obviously key to keep people working, to keep the city's economy healthy. He's come from a different perspective. He has often sort of, uh, of course, talked about trying to make the city more equal. His campaign in 2012 into 13 was very focused on income inequality and larger issues of equality. And he has sort of eschewed a lot of the big business leaders and uh, criticized you know, the wealthy often and talked about trying to make a, a more equal city in a way that I think a lot of candidates in the 2021 election are actually trying to get away from and talking in some of the same terms about equality, but also trying to get away from what they've seen as sort of a divisive way that de Blasio has done it. So I think that's, that's sort of an interesting theme so far in terms of how folks are talking about creating a more fair, a more equal city, but definitely not trying to uh, go to the same sort of talking points that de Blasio has had that, that seem to have alienated some people. One of the things that makes talking about this issue interesting for me, Ben, is that it um, it really, it's not like talking about parks where you're just talking about parks. It's really like a bundle of a, a, a lot of different policy areas and issues. I mean, when you talk about the economy, you're obviously talking about you know, job creation um, and entrepreneurship and small businesses, but the city taxes, uh, you know, poverty and inequality, as you mentioned, are in there, you know, direct efforts to do economic development, whether that's large scale or small scale, even things like the cost of living, living the affordability crunch, which was a big part of de Blasio's 2013 campaign. And I think it also was one of those issues that kind of spreads into and is affected by and affects uh, lots of other issues too. You know, when candidates talk about uh, public safety, that has an economic impact. When we talk about the transit system, the education system, obviously that has an impact too, maybe not as direct or as immediate, but um, there's certainly a connection there. Right, and as, you know, as candidates are running for office, whether it's mayor or city controller or city council seats or others, you know, one of the most important pressing matters for voters and other residents of the city is of course, what's the economic health of the city what kind of jobs are available, what are the quality of those jobs, what are the wages, what are the benefits? Um, and as you get at, how do I get to work? Is it easy to get to work? What's my quality of life around my job? You know, there's so many different factors that go into sort of the economic health of the city and then also people's individual experiences with the economy. And that's also where, as you mentioned, we get into schools and the really under-discussed issue of the city's uh, public university system, CUNY, which really you know, yeah. needs to be a part of the discussion in these elections. And part of the reason that it sometimes I think gets left out of the discussion is because it is this you know, sort of quasi state city independent entity. Um, and it's not directly at all under the control of the mayor. It's not really under the control of the governor per se. 
And so it sort of gets left out of the discussion sometimes, but especially as the city is going through such difficult economic times, you know, CUNY is a very important uh, piece of the puzzle as well as the pre-K through 12 system that the mayor has much more control over and that, you know, the city council has uh, oversight power of, et cetera. And, and whether people are graduating from New York City schools ready to go to college, ready to then use that experience to enter the workforce for good paying jobs. Those are big questions for all the candidates. And you know, this is one of those issues that people have talked about since they began having elections, right? I mean, you could go down an issue list in any mayoral campaign dating back to the 1898 consolidation of the city and the economy would be there. But I think obviously, as you mentioned at the outset, things are much more fraught this year. Uh, this is a chart I pulled from um, federal labor, stat labor stats showing employment in the city. And you can see, you know, basically the history of the city as we understand it is partly written in some of these numbers, right? The fiscal crisis in the 70s, um, you know, growth in the 80s, a recession that affected David Dinkins' mayoralty. Um, you can see the dip after September 11th. You can see the dip after the financial crisis, a very impressive gain in the years since then uh, for which Mayor de Blasio took some credit. And we'll talk in a second about whether that was appropriate or not. And then just an incredible fall off in the past year. And I think one of the questions is obviously what happens beyond that chart and whether the tremendous challenge of COVID is just a devastating one-time blip, like the worst blip of all time, or if it has fundamentally changed the landscape of the economy. And I think that's one of the difficult questions people to deal with is, you know, is the population going to come back? Are people going to return to offices? Is retail ever going to look like it used to? Is dining, tourism, are those things tourism, ever going to yeah. come back? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, this goes to another point that we have to keep in mind as, in, as we talk about this discussion. And obviously our focus as always is on the mayoral race. Other people in the mix affect the economy too, the council, um, the comptroller, certainly others have a hand too. But anyone on the city level is obviously, um, no, one, no one has a lever controlling uh, the economy. Um, at any level of power, but especially here in the city, they are, you know, mayor is subject to, you know, the um, rises and falls of the larger economic sea, and also economic policy that he or she doesn't set, you know, what the Fed does with, um, with interest rates and what the president and Congress do with the stimulus, with tax policy, you know, one of Trump's um, big slights against the city was changing how local and state income taxes are deducted or not deducted against your tax liability. So you're dealing with an issue that's both massive and important, a huge part of the neural conversation and other campaign conversations um, in a very fraught state now, and also one where any local politician is going to have partial control um, over having some influence on it. Well, we don't have to, a couple of things you said, you know, remind me of, of a few recent issues. You know, again, our focus is, of course, on the mayoral race. The mayor still has so much power in the city, but we don't have to look uh, too far back to see how city council decisions around land use uh, or even just sort of the use of the bully pulpit and, and, you know, coalitions opposing certain projects can have an impact on the city's economic picture. Obviously, there was the Amazon HQ2 deal that went down. There was an industry city rezoning proposal that was supposed to be adding jobs that was opposed and withdrawn. Those are a couple of big recent examples, but the city council through its land use decisions, but also just how the local political atmosphere is, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around whether there's, um, you know, too much of an anti-development, anti-growth mentality when it comes to housing, which we can't separate from jobs when, when it comes to issues related to transit and transit policy, and then some of these big land use decisions. The other thing I wanted to mention, though, to frame some of this and, and then get into more of what city policy around the economy really is all about, um, is, is that we had before COVID historically low unemployment in the city, just under 4%, and it jumped to well over 20% and then came back down to the low teens. But it's also really important to note that even when unemployment was under 4%, the poverty rate in the city was extremely high. And mm -hmm. that's because very often uh, so many of the jobs in the city, and again, it's, it's better that there's more jobs than fewer, of course, but we're in lower paying sectors, retail, hospitality, restaurants, of course, um, and, and, and just a number of different sectors 
that weren't paying enough for people to, to really get by. And that also relates to another thing you were saying, which is, is the different levels of government. One of the biggest ways that people have come out of poverty in recent years is the minimum wage increase that was passed at the state level. But a lot of that was pushed by de Blasio and many others at the city level. So obviously a lot of parts moving together in this discussion, but I think it is important to note that one thing we are seeing people say, people in government now and running for government, is that we don't really want to return to the economy from before COVID. We want to bring jobs back, but we want to figure out how they can be better paying jobs with better benefits and not have 4% unemployment and 20% of the New York City population still living in below poverty. And the unemployment rate itself kind of gets to a different issue, which is that you have the city economy writ large, and then you have many people who don't participate in it, maybe don't participate in, in a formal way. They work in the gray economy. They are paid under the table. They you know, are unlicensed vendors, something like that. And also people who just are not in the economy. One of the tricky things about the unemployment rate, of course, is that it only counts people who are actively looking for work but don't have it. People who have uh, never entered the workforce, who've dropped out, who are totally disconnected, don't count. That's always been kind of the other number to look at in the city um, and a big concern because obviously the number of jobs in the city can involve, especially now, people who don't actually live or pay taxes here or raise their families here. So yeah, it's a, it's a complex issue with a lot of different layers and a lot of different power that the city can use. You've, we've mentioned a few already, um, you know, the bully pulpit, land use policies, obviously city tax policy, and frankly, city hiring is a huge part of the economy. Um, 300,000 or so city employees obviously are a major part of the workforce. Um, what they are paid, what city contractors are paid. These have been some of the levers used in the past. And obviously there are, there are plenty of others too. Well, and many, many thousands, as you just got at, many, many thousands more who are not directly on the city uh, government payroll, but are, are part of city contracted services. You know, the human nonprofit services sector is a huge one that the city contracts with for things like, uh, you know, homeless shelters and, and you know, uh, food services and so many others. And so there's a lot of people that rely on city spending, city government programs for work. Um, there's a lot of discussion, at least in the mayoral race early on about city tax policy and how it could be used to help small businesses. There's also obviously related to the economy, city policy related to things like business fines, business, business regulations. You know, there's a lot that's not under the city government control, but there is a lot that is. And we've seen uh, Mayor de Blasio take some steps to try to reduce fines on small businesses, but there's a lot of discussion that that could go further. Uh, there's discussion about trying to remove, of course, as always, the uh, red tape that's in the way uh, for businesses. You got at this idea of street vending. We're seeing the number of street vending permits drastically expand, it looks like. That's part of the picture. Um, and, and there's also some very interesting discussion, the mayoral race, um, a couple of candidates especially have been talking about this, including Maya Wiley, about better using the city's massive capital budget spending to create jobs and especially to create good paying jobs for low income communities, for communities of color, for people living in the city um, to have more opportunity for jobs that are, that are really funded by city spending. Yeah, and I think, you know, that gets to one of the kind of tricky dilemmas for whoever's going to be the next mayor is that if the tax environment, the economic environment lends itself, at least in some people's eyes, to a more austere approach to spending, that has a macroeconomic effect that the city uh, cuts funding, if it cuts spending on capital, if it cuts jobs, you know, that might have an effect to clean up the city's balance sheet, but it will have a broader economic impact as well. And I think, you know, when we come to questions that we want the candidates to answer, mayoral and otherwise, now and over the next few months of this campaign, that's one of the big ones for me is, do they think the economy has fundamentally changed? You know, is the new normal going to look different from the pre-COVID normal in terms of people coming to the office uh, people living in the city, retail existing like we used to. And if it has changed, how do we adapt to that? Right. I think that's a really important one. And, and you know, the, the reliance of the city, as you said early on in this conversation, on, um, you know, commuters coming into Midtown Manhattan. It's not the only piece, but it's a huge piece in how Midtown has been so hollowed out. And that 
isn't just about those office jobs all over Manhattan, but also the jobs that then rely on those jobs. And those are jobs, of course, in service and food and other uh, sectors of the economy. And so, so important about, uh, you know, what the future of work looks like and how, and how city government is trying to talk with business leaders, work with small businesses, and do so many other things to try to make sure that jobs return and, and that, they, that they're safe. Um, one of the biggest questions that I want mayoral candidates and others to answer is to really dig into the specifics of leveraging city policy for job growth. What does that look like in terms of tax policy, land use policy, a number of other policies, use of the capital budget that we got at, um, use of the city's economic development corporation, and other city entities, you mentioned health and hospitals, there's of course others, using those to create jobs and foster economic growth, not necessarily just uh, city government jobs, of course, but private sector jobs and how the city can leverage its assets, its money, its spending, and its policy to create jobs. What does that look like uh, in specific? Well, we'll be asking those questions and more at City Limits at Gotham Gazette on WBAI every Wednesday at five. So please stay tuned to those resources. And please, if you want to find out whether you are registered, uh, find out where you're supposed to vote, uh, other information about the all important 2021 races, please go to vote.nyc.